Pool C, winding it down, we have Ireland and then Jamaica. So, so far we've gone through New Zealand. We've also gone through the Lebanon team, the two favorites at this pool. Now we're looking at uh, two teams that aren't expected to make it out. Miles, what are your first thoughts on this Ireland team? Uh, they're a massive wild card, but not as much as the wild card we're about to talk about later from the Caribbean. But uh, there's a couple of really big names in this team that I enjoy seeing in there. Richie Myler, a uh, huge name from the Super League. If you don't watch much Super League, he has over 350 games worth of experience. I, don't know, I feel like they play a lot of games over there. James Graham was a 500 game man. And, you know, it's, it's weird, weird on the amount of games they play. I suppose they have the, the Challenge Cup and, and, and other competitions as well. So, But the fans who um, haven't but, watched him at all, do you know much about Richie Mo? Like, tell us a bit about how he plays, you know, what are his strengths? What's the, what should everyone be looking out for with him? Yes, yeah, so he's more of a half. Um, I find it interesting that they're probably going to put him at fullback. But I think with that experience in the back line, uh, he's going to be absolutely crucial to getting them uh, any type of win uh, here. He's a finesse type player, not the best defender. Uh, not many Super League players are, but uh, I think that's the knock on the entire competition. But he's all about the silky um, style half. He's got a lot of um, a lot of talent, like a like a poor man's. I would say a poor man's Mitch Moses. He's not got the running game, but he's got the kicking game and the finesse to be able to come up with those passing plays when he needs to. So if we're looking at this team then, a skillful fullback, you know, someone who can play make it fullback. You combine that with, I've heard great things about Joe Keys, and he's alongside the legendary Luke Geary as well. So a lot of talent in that one, six, seven, very similar story to what we were talking about with Lebanon, having Karaz, Dewey and Moses there. Um, but if those guys can sort of steer the ship and just put other guys in good spots. Do you think there's any chance that this team can make it out of this pool? They're going to have to get a win against Lebanon, uh, and that's going to be the team that they, or the matchup that they're going to have to win um, to be able to get out of here. But I just think that they're a little bit on the short side as far as talent goes, or top tier talent, whereas the Cedars have got you know, the Moses, the Dewey, we talked about that, but this is, it's nice to see that they're getting a, a nice influx of NRL talent along with the Super League guys that are in there. You know, Harry Rushton got his debut for the Raiders this year, and that was a very nice moment to see. And we got Jamin Joloff there as well. So uh, I find it interesting that he's on the bench. So they must have some pretty big confidence in uh, in their forwards or their starting forwards at this point in time. So I'm interested to see how they play. You know, I've got Irish heritage in my background. I know you do too. So yes, sir. Uh, we'll be sl slightly cheering for them, but uh, we'll, we'll see how they go. I think Kiri is going to be the key. Problem for me is I'm rooting for Mitch Moses <laughs> for Lebanon. I'm also rooting for these boys. So maybe I'm cheering against the New Zealand uh, Kiwis instead. I mean, can both of them make it through? Can the Kiwis strike out? Probably not. Um, but I do agree. Luke Kiri is interesting. So Kiri's, Kiri's sort of gone from a position where he was viewed as undisputably one of the best halves in the game to a lot of talk now about how the Roosters can get out of his contract. You know, about uh, he numbers like 1.3 million and that kind of thing. How can the Chooks get out of this contract? How can they run Sam Walker, Joey Manu at six? Or how can they run Tedesco at six? How can they just get away from Kiri? And I think for him, that noise has to be in his head a bit. You know, he's, he's coming to this tournament fully fit. He's had a little bit of time off. They didn't go too deep into the finals, the Chooks. If I'm him, Especially, yeah, what, what's he, like 30 years old? Something like that? Uh, I think he's, he's... He's around that, yeah. Yeah, he's an absolute competitor, mate. He was a couple of years above yeah. us at school. Um, I, I didn't know it, but he plays like an absolute competitor. He's so tough. Uh, I think he's going to come out and he's going to want to lead this team to some wins. And he's going to want to personally put on a big performance. So I'm a little frightened for the other teams in this pool that Kiri could just come out and put on a masterclass. Yeah, again, probably another guy with a point to prove. Um, you know, a lot of people have been doubting him during this year, saying that Manu should be the long-term six and, yeah. you know, Kiri should move on because he's on big money um, and that could hurt the Roosters moving forward. I just, 
I just think the guy's got to get a bit of respect for what he did. It was less than five years ago. You know, let's let's be honest. He's a three-time premiership winner, and you don't win three premierships without playing a big part. He won a Clive Churchill medal in that time as well, so he completely took over uh, that grand final against the Storm from memory. Um, he's just he's just absolute live wire, and I think if he doesn't get hit in the head again, I would love to see the guy play out till he's 34, 35, because I think that's where the the sort of ambiguity comes in when we're talking about Luke Curry. Um, but I hope that while playing for Ireland, he gets that, you know, full off season of playing competitive football and he comes back raring to go for the Roosters next year. Yeah, he's too good. He's too good to be talked about the way he is. Um, and the Chooks are a title threat whenever he plays as well. So no, I agree with that. Look, talking about guys who have something to prove, you mentioned Rushton and Joel there too. Rushton's young. Rushton with a big World Cup could make a dent. You get himself into the picture. And Joliff, I think everyone knows what Joliff is. Um, and I think everyone who watches footy, uh, everyone who, actually, the casual fan would know who Joliff is. <laughs> but yeah. anyone who's actually watched the footy just knows how tough he is. Like, he just he just rocks yeah. up every game. He, go, he runs the ball hard every time. He's trustworthy in defense. He's just a genuine first grade, grade front rower. Like, uh, Parramatta, we've lost some some forwards this year if we signed Joel if I'd be stoked like he's just that kind of player where he's so reliable and maybe he can infuse a bit of that into these other forwards here do you know any of these other guys or because I'm not super familiar with a lot of these other players um I would say that I'm also not very familiar but you know with with the Super League being on at the time that it is it's, it's hard to to get on there but um, a lot of these guys play at that level uh, and it's and it's not to be smirked at uh, are we watching that though are we watching their first yeah. game them versus Jamaica I think we're gonna learn a lot in that game yeah um, we're gonna be doing reaction videos to those games as well maybe show a bit of highlights and that sort of thing too so we're gonna be learning on the fly through this mm-hmm. World Cup um, oh, we'll very, get to know these guys pretty well <laughs> yeah especially I'm just keen to see George King you know you got the experience in this team but you're number 13 is he captain? Mm-hmm. Let's see who he is. Uh, even these backs, uh, Louis and Innes, are they related? I don't yeah, know. Louis and Innes Senior. Yeah, they're, they're brothers. So. They are? Uh, that's they, awesome. They'll enjoy playing outside each other, which is good. So that's the fucking um, coolest thing I've ever seen. Brothers yeah. playing together internationally. Yeah. So In a awesome. World Cup. Yeah. So awesome. I think that is probably, so probably not since... Maybe Brett and Josh Morris are probably the only two I can think of that would have done that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll brothers, see how they probably do it at we'll some see point. how they stock up against uh, Jamaica in their first game. Uh, they should get an easy win. What do you reckon? Easy win. I know. I mean, let's let's go to Jamaica. Let's go to Jamaica because we got them next. Mm-hmm. Easy win. Disrespect. The three <laughs> Jamaicans that follow this channel will be really upset with you. Uh, <laughs> Jamaica. So, look, I'm going to be honest. I don't know this team at all. Uh, we've got a two and three with the same names again. Is that what we're going to talk about? Um, yeah, it, it's difficult because it's difficult to find any information on any um, players that play for uh, Jamaica. I, the only thing I can really mention is that Ben Jones Bishop who's playing in the centres. Uh, again, outside his brother, which he's so got cool. 300 games with Super League experience, which is fantastic you know, to see. And uh, Ashton Golding, the fullback, is going to be very important to them getting any kind of win. But I think we've got to also remember that Jamaica, to make it into this World Cup, they beat the USA. And the USA have been trying to wow. get better at playing rugby league for the last, I reckon, 10 years. Would you would you say, like, 10 years? I mean, ever since they lost Joseph Polo, you know, they just yeah. haven't been the same country. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of being sarcastic, but not really. Like, he was actually so good for the US. Everything yeah. ran through Joe, Joe Polo. Look, the hardcore, <laughs> diehard para fans when we, from when we won our spoons will we'll agree that Joe Polo left everything on the field. Yeah, I think the last time I saw them personally would have been the nines competition in 2019 um and Ronaldo Mulatalo was the fullback so 
you know, you look at it then and to now, Molotalo is playing for the Kiwis and it's it's tough, you know, you know, stealing those kind of players. And I don't think Ronaldo can't really just drop the Sharks and go play for the US team because you know, he's obviously looking to play at, a, at the highest level and play for a team that he thinks has a chance to win. But oh, well, some yeah, is a monster I just think, as well. I just think like, we have to give we have to give heaps of props to Jamaica for even getting here. It's the first time they've done so. Um, Alec Young, as well, is Dom Young's brother. So a bit disappointing that Dom Young decided to play for England, but yeah, that could have been a nice, um, a nice brotherly duo again. Uh, True, but Dom Young, uh, you, get, you get to start for England, right? Like there's some good playmakers on that team. But Jamaica, though, look at this. Jamaica, the Jamaicans had a truly remarkable rise to the World Cup. Uh, with the country not having a specific rugby league field in their nation. <laughs> that's <laughs> bloody every suburb that's what in I'm, Australia that's what I'm saying. has like, it's field taken field. them it's taken them an absolute it's been a mission to get even this far and for them to get it's on a so plane cool, and go though. to the World Cup. Uh, it's like cool running if but for rugby league. If you're a part of it <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Like it's, <laughs> No, they're going to feel the rhythm and feel the rhyme. Yeah, they're mate. the Jamaican bobsled team at the tournament. Like, <laughs> it's no, it's incredible. I, I, I'm going to root for them now. Just looking at this, like, yeah, who have we got? Yep. So Ashton Goulding, you're talking about there. Kieran Rush as well. So they've got some some Giants players. Maybe those guys will have a bit of co cohesion there too. Do you do you think they can? Yeah. All, right, all right. So what's all right? If you're the Jamaican coach. Like getting to the tournament was a win, right? But now that yeah. you're here, what, what's your metric? Like, do you do you want to be in a game? Is that is that sort of your metric, or do you want to win one? Is that do you dare to dream? Do you do you, do you dream about you know winning two and getting through? Like, what, what what's your your pass mark for this team? I think it's so tough to even put metrics around them. Um, but well, for, unfortunately, we have to because we've got to do it for every team. But I think that they're going to be completely and utterly out of their depth when it comes to being part of the 16 best teams in the world in rugby league. Uh, it's just going to be a tall order to get anywhere. Um, their best chance is going to come against Ireland in that first game, and we'll know um, where they Ambush. stand after that. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be their best chance to grab a win. After that, it only gets harder because they've got to play New Zealand and Lebanon. So um, I just think that, yeah, with the inexperience of some guys on that roster at high levels of rugby league, and as you mentioned, not really having a dedicated, I suppose, association to the sport uh, as some of these other countries do is going to cost them in the long run not having that grassroots kind of capability but you know we'll see what they are made of hopefully they're fast because <laughs> most most Jamaicans you know if you don't, if you can't run the 100 in under 10 seconds don't you get deported so uh, I, I don't know um hopefully they're quick and uh, i'm sure that they'll uh, they'll find you know some solace they'll take experience from this which is great um and hopefully the game builds in, in that part of the world the advantage they'll have too is no one will know what to expect. Like there'll be, you know, a bit of footage yeah. review and that kind of stuff, but everyone knows what to expect with Australia, New Zealand, you know, England, these types of teams. But uh, Jamaica comes in first time in the cup. We, we don't know the brand they're going to play. We like some of these players are known, but a lot of these players aren't particularly well known, especially by their opposition. So they could be underestimated. They could come out and fire. Um, I've got Ireland taking out Jamaica personally. Um, in terms of predictions for this video, uh, I think Ireland go one and two. I think Jamaica go on three. I just can't see too much of an upset there. There's a chance Ireland upset Lebanon. If Lebanon don't turn up to play or if there's an injury, I'm very surprised to see Greece just at the top here. Such big outsiders against France. I might get on that later. Mm. Um, <laughs> that's not what we're talking about <laughs> here. Do, do you agree with those predictions? Yeah, look, I think it's going to be extremely tough for them to get any kind of footing in, in this World Cup. they got three games. Uh, hopefully they enjoy them. Hopefully they enjoy the trip uh, to the cold that is uh, England. So hopefully they, they get experience from it and come back uh, and make it 
next time make a good go of it and the game I, i'm just enjoying seeing the game develop in places that you might not expect so that's something that um is really heartwarming and, and really something to root for you know you want them to do well that's awesome and look try harder usa like come on <laughs> yeah, just just take everyone who didn't make the nfl they're all running nine second hundreds anyway <laughs> get those guys in there athletically there should be no issue uh, but look, we're going to jump into our next video here. I think Pool D is one of the most popular pools, um, one of the most exciting pools. There's so much hype for Tonga. There's so much hype for Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea fans are the most passionate nation in terms of supporting rugby league. And then Wales and Cook Islands are pretty interesting ones to come to as well.